squares and square roots. What are square numbers? When you multiply a whole number by itself, you get a square number. For example, if I take the number 3 squared, that is the same as 3 multiplied by 3, which equals 9. Therefore, 9 is a square number. Another example is 5. So 5 squared is the same as 5 multiplied by 5, which equals 25. Therefore, 25 is also a squared number. Now, many people ask why is the term squared used? Well, 2 squared is actually the same as 2 multiplied by 2, which gives us an answer of 4. Now, if you think about this visually, here's a square. Each side, I'm not specifying the length, but each side is consisting of two smaller squares. So there's one here, there's another one there, and that together gives us two squares, and the same goes down the other side. Now, if we find the area, which is kind of what we're doing here, 2 multiplied by 2, we find that there are four smaller squares inside. Here's 1, 2, 3, and 4. And these make a perfect square. Here's another example. 3 squared. So 3 squared would be 3 multiplied by 3, which equals 9. And if you check this square, each side has 3. So there's 1, 1 there, 2, 3, and there's 3 down. 1, 2, 3. And if we check smaller squares inside, we find that there are 9. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. The same applies for any squared number. So 4 squared, we know the answer is 16. If we look at the diagram, there are 4 parts to this side, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if you were to count up all of the individual small squares, you would find 16 in total. Moving on, I'd like you to have a go at these questions, and I'll give you the answers in two minutes' time. So the first one, which is the same as 5 multiplied by 5, gives you an answer of 25. Second one is equal to 49. The third one is equal to 64. Fourth one equals to 81. Fifth one is 121. And the last one is 140. Four. Moving on to square roots. So what are square roots? Square roots are basically the opposite of square numbers. Now this is a square root sign. It's also known as a radical. But more on that later on. So what you need to do is think about it in this way. So let's say, for example, we are looking for the square root of 100. Ask yourself this question and put the number at the end. So what number multiplied by itself gives 100? And the answer for that should be 10. The reason for that is because 10 squared equals 100. So the square root of 100 is 10. It's like working backwards. Another one, let's do the square root of 49. Ask yourself the question, what number multiplied by itself gives 49? And the answer for that one is 7, because 7 squared equals 49. Have a go at these questions. I'll give you the answers in two minutes time. The square root of 1 equals to 1. 
because 1 squared is still 1. Uh, square root of 4 should equal 2 because 2 squared equals 4. Square root of 9 equals 3 because 3 squared equals 9. Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of 64 is 8. And the square root of 121 is 11. Can we have negative square roots? The answer for this question is yes. So we know that the square root of 49 is 7 because 7 squared equals 49. But also we could have negative 7 times by negative 7 which also gives us 49 because two negative numbers when multiplied together give us an answer which is positive. So therefore, we could also have negative 2 multiplied by negative 2, which gives us an answer of 4. Generally speaking, unless the question specifies that you have to find the negative square root, then you always assume that you are asked to find the positive one. So unless it says in the question, find the negative square root of, let's say for example, 100, taking this example here, then you could say it's minus 10 because minus 10 squared equals 100. If you've got any questions, just write them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.